But if we look through the Bible, we can find places that talk about how we can uh, receive the blessings, how when we obey, He will bless us. Okay, now when we pray, it's very important to pray, to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. The Father is seeking people who are worshiping in spirit and in truth. Some people just pray with the mouth, with the mind. But we want to pray with our whole spirit, the whole person, and in truth, following the truth of God. So God wants us to worship with the whole person. And worship with the whole person includes the soul and the spirit. And the soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. So the mind will agree with God, uh, with the Bible and God's will. So when our mind agrees with God, yes, Lord, you are the best. What the Bible says is true. I want to follow you. I want to obey you. And we decide to follow God and obey God, that we want to obey Him. So the desire, the will to obey Him. And then the feelings, build up, build up positive feelings toward God. Uh, now, we all have positive feelings toward people we like, have positive feelings toward our house, the things we own. If we have good feelings, we feel good about people we like, how much more should we have good feeling toward God? You know, that we should delight in God, desire God. So, when we delight in God already, we are very close to praying with the Spirit. Now, the key of being filled with the Holy Spirit is worship in spirit and in truth. That the whole spirit worship God, the whole mind agrees that God is good, and the whole will uh, wants to follow God, wants to love God, want to obey God. And all the feelings saying, I love you, I like you, I desire you, I delight in God, I like God. And worship with the spirit is worship with the whole inner being. All that is in me, praise His holy name. The whole person praises His holy name. So when we pray, don't just pray with the mouth, but pray with the whole person. Father, I love you. I desire you. I delight in you. I like you. You're so wonderful. I want your will to be done. Your will be done. Your, uh, your kingdom come. Hallelujah. So we pray with the whole spirit. That's how, so we want we, when we motivate people to pray, we tell them all the promises of God, that God has promised to bless us in so many ways. And then also we teach them to worship in spirit and in truth. Now, it's something we need to learn. Now for me, anytime I just think of God, hallelujah, <laughs> immediately the joy of the Lord comes. They tell me I'm praying from my spirit. When we pray from the Spirit, gradually you experience joy. I've told many people to cry out to God like this, Hallelujah! Praise you, Father! Praise you, Father! Some people cry out and then they experience joy. And sometimes this would help. Now, first, it's like pouring out your Spirit to God. Father, we thank you! I thank you! I love you! And also it's like blowing out all the burdens. Ah, hallelujah. All the burdens come out. All the unhappy feelings come out. And also, um, sometimes it will help to, uh, to blow out the burdens. <sighs> all the burdens go out. Or like the Spirit comes out from us to go to God. You blow and then you think of, my Spirit come to God. <sighs> think of flying to God. Oh, ah, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, you try to do this, and sometimes, you know, it takes time. Then you learn to how to worship with the whole spirit. Thank you, Father. I love you. I adore you. And then you can experience Him more and more. Okay, we motivate people to read the Bible. 2 Timothy 2.13 If we are faithless, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. Even when we are faithless, even when we are tr not trustworthy, God remains to be faithful. God continues to be faithful because He cannot deny Himself. He, what He has promised, He will do. He will always follow His, His promises. So He always will 
He is always faithful, even though even when we are not faithful. So God is always faithful. That makes God very beautiful. His promises are always trustworthy. The Bible is full of His promises. So God is always faithful, and that makes God very beautiful. He's always beautiful. He always keeps His promises. His promises are always trustworthy, and the Bible is full of His promises. So when we read the Bible, we know His promises more, and then we'll have the motivation to follow Him. And God's promises can help us through all difficulties and personal problems. Any problem we believe, yes, God will bless me, will help me when I trust in Him, I seek His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to me. And when I love Him, He'll prepare for me things the human mind cannot think of. He'll prepare all these things so I don't have to worry. When we understand and trust in God's Word, we'll become secure in God and we'll have great wisdom. So the more we understand the Bible, the more we trust in the Word of God, then we will become secure in God and we'll have great wisdom and we don't have to worry about anything. Psalm 119.105 Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We don't know our future. You know, so this verse says that your word is a lamp to my feet. It's like a lamp in front of me and a light on my path to my path. It will light up the path. We don't know our future, but God has a wonderful plan for us. If we obey Him, God will make His wonderful plan come true. So we don't know the future, but God knows it. And God has a wonderful plan even when people mistreat us. Even when there are difficulties, God still has a wonderful plan. So I can trust in God. I don't have to worry. The, the more I read the Bible, the more the Word of God will guide me to follow His way. Because the Word of God is the lamb to my feet. It will be the lamb to light my path, to guide me. We don't have to worry about our future when we follow God's Word. When we follow God's Word, we don't have to worry about anything. He will guide us. He will teach us. Uh, he will have the best way for us. If we offer our body as a living sacrifice, we don't conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind, then we'll discern the good and perfect will of God. And Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of, of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Word of God is living and is powerful. It has life. It is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's very sharp. It can pierce even to the division of soul and spirit. It can discern our soul and our spirit, cut through to show what is inside of us, and of joints and marrow, to the, the physical part and the spiritual part, the joints and the marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It will show our thoughts, our intentions. God's Word is powerful and can discern and convict our hearts. It can show the sins of our heart. The problem in our lives block God's blessings from us. If we let God's Word discern and change our lives, our life will become great. Because when we have problem, it will block the blessings of God. But when we let God's Word discern our heart and guide us to change our lives, if we have anger, frustration, if we have selfishness, if we have uh, selfish desire or lust, or laziness, all this, the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, will discern our heart. And then we follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, then we can change our life. So the Word of God is very powerful to change our lives. And then 2 Timothy 3.16, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It's inspired by God and is profitable for doctrine. It's profitable to us for doctrine, for our beliefs. And I want to say there are many beliefs that people have now. They are not from the Bible. 
there are many beliefs, like for instance about spiritual warfare. Uh, the Bible doesn't talk about the spiritual warfare some people talk about. The Bible talk about having faith, having the righteousness of God, the helmet of righteous, uh, the helmet of salvation, and uh, uh, the the shoe of salvation to uh, of the gospel and the sword of the Holy Spirit. That is the spiritual warfare. And when we, and then also the Bible says in Revelation that the Christ, Christian have victory over Satan by uh, the blood of the Lamb and the word they testify. So it's, we have victory by the blood of Jesus and also by the word of our testimony, by our witnessing. So now you look through Paul, uh, the book of Acts. When Paul was persecuted in different places, Paul did not pray the prayer of some people pray when he was persecuted and put in prison. He was just praising God, worshiping God, and he just preached the gospel. Now, when we pray, we want to pray to build up the relationship. Some people's prayer is directed against the devil all the time. Actually, you notice that in the Lord's Prayer, it's not directed toward the devil. The part that's related to that is saying, deliver us from evil. Deliver us. It's saying to God. It's not saying to devil. It's not saying to devil. Uh, but to say to God, deliver us from evil, from the evil one, and also from any kind of sin. So it's praying to God for deliverance. But many people just shout to Satan all the time. It's, uh, the Bible doesn't have that kind of prayer, except in driving out demons. It's in Jesus' name that demons come out. Other than that, the Bible doesn't have that kind of prayer, but people can be spending hours shouting to demons, driving them out. Actually, when we love God, the demons will run away. So those, are not, those doctrines are not from the Bible. We read the Bible. How do we have the spiritual warfare? It's having a close relationship with God and pray to God to have strength, to have power, to have love, and then preach the gospel. That is how we fight the devil. So you read through Galatians, uh, Ephesians chapter 6 to find out how to fight the spiritual warfare. For reproof, to pointing out our sins, for correction, to correct us from the way of sin and instruction in righteousness, to instruct us how to obey the righteousness of God, how to obey His law, his commandment, that a man of God may be complete. So the word of God help us to be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, so that we can be equipped for every good work. God is the best teacher. God will speak through his word. When we read his word, he will guide us onto the best path. So he's the best teacher and the, he uses his word to speak to us. And then he will speak to us and guide us. And when we read the Word of God, He will guide us to the best path to obey Him and to how to turn away from sins, how, how our beliefs should be. And many people experience specific guidance when they read the Bible. When they read the Bible, sometimes people are motivated to preach the gospel, to go to the mission field, to uh, forgive people. So the Word of God will give us specific guidance. Now about specific guidance, there are some people who always ask me, please have prophetic prayer for me. And I see that their life is full of problems. They have all kinds of sins. They, have, um, they don't repent. Their relationship with God is very weak. I said to them, the Word of God already tells you what you need to do. The Word of God tells you to repent and Trust in Jesus' forgiveness and build the relationship with God. Trust in Jesus' goodness and love Him and spend time loving Him and obeying Him, worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. And He will come to bless you and take care of your sins and your negative thinking and your negative emotions, your problems, uh, uh, any kind of problem in your life. Those are necessary for your growth. 
So many people don't look to the Word of God, just look for prophets. I was, you know, I, I know that there are prophetic words. I've seen prophets who are very accurate. But I find that the prophetic word given to me was something like this. God is going to prepare you. There are two or three persons who gave me these prophetic words that I will be missionary to different countries. I'll bless people in different countries. The prophetic word of God is mainly for directing God's people to how to be used by God, how to follow Him, how to obey Him, how to serve Him. As for how to grow in Jesus, in a Jesus relationship with God, this is all in the Bible. These people who have a lot of problems in their life, they first need to read the Bible and follow the Bible. And then they will uh, grow in Jesus Christ. And they will get the blessings of God when they build up the relationship with God and read the Bible and follow the Bible, obey the Bible, and love God all the time. Then they will start to receive blessings from God. And then God will give them specific direction how to be used by God. And God can speak to us too. God can speak to us directly. Sometimes prophets can confirm these words from God. And we want to, you know, when a prophet speaks to us, we can discern. But there are prophets who are not trustworthy. There is one person who asked me, uh, I go to a church now and they have a big prophet and they give out emails to, uh, in his prayer, he'll give out emails of his prayer to the church. And he asked me, do you want it? I know there are problems with that church. I said, I don't want it. But he still sent it to me and I opened it. And I found it says, this year God is going to give you money to the people of this church. This is not God's word. God's word is, when you seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you. When you seek God first, when you obey Him, when you love Him, He will prepare for you things you never imagined. God doesn't speak and say, oh, this year I'm going to give you money. God's blessings always have conditions of conditions of loving God, obedience of God. When a prophet speaks the word of God, it's not just saying this year the people of this church will have a lot of money. This is not from God. So there are prophets like that. They want to please people with money, with, oh, this year you come across great blessings. This I have from the Bible. The Bible tells me if I love God, He'll prepare for, for me things I never imagined. God already told me that. I don't need a prophet to know that. God will bless me. God will bless me when I trust in Him and obey Him and follow Him. This is from the Bible. So we can receive this kind of words from the Bible already. Now, there are functions of prophets that, for instance, starting this Global Fire Missions Ministries was started by some people receiving prophetic, prophetic word from God. It's a guidance for ministry. And also, you know, God spoke to me the direction of training pastors and leaders. This is from God guiding me. God's prophets are mainly for building up spirit, the, the spiritual life of people so they will serve God. The direction of serving God. The direction of building the church. The direction of building the kingdom of God. And as far as personal blessings, the Bible already promised that. When we follow God and obey God. Okay, now next session we'll talk about how to handle negative thinking and emotions. Okay, that is a very important topic. Okay, so now we have a break time. Uh, we'll have a prayer now. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you. You are full of blessings. You have given us many blessings. You have promised us when we come to you, when we dwell in you, you dwell in us. And we'll bear much fruit. When we, when we come close to you, you'll come close to us. And you bless us in every way. When we love you, you prepare for things our mind can never imagine. Lord Jesus, 
we know that you have promised us so many things. When we delight in you, you prepare for uh, things of our desire. You fulfill our desires and you cause us to go to a high place. Thank you, Jesus. You are a wonderful God. You are a generous God. And you have shown us how to follow you. Lord, help us to love you, to obey you, to serve you, to glorify you all the time. And help us to enjoy you, to enjoy serving you. Even giving a cup of water to a little one will by no means lose the reward. And you, we can rejoice in that. So we can rejoice in our ministry. We can rejoice in helping people and blessing people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. Lord, please strengthen us. Give us motivation to love you and obey you from your grace. That we all will be motivated to love you because of your grace. That we motivate people with God's grace. We don't just push people. We don't just force people to obey. But we tell them, God gives you so much blessings. God is working in your life. When you follow Him, when, he, when He's happy with you, He'll bless you with everything. So we can encourage people to love God with God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. We love you and worship you. We adore you. We thank you. Hallelujah.